All right, so we're gonna go over um, multi-layer compression dressings um, real quick, what we'll use for venous stasis uh, ulcers primarily. Um, I would consider it kind of the gold standard. In my experience, it's by far the most effective way to get rid of the edema and actually give the skin a chance to heal. Um, if you don't get it compressed, those wounds down there are just gonna stay open. Um, there's just too much internal pressure from all that edema pushing out. Um, so this is kind of the, the go-to treatment. So you've got two options. Usually you're gonna have either a three layer or a four layer wrap. And I'll kind of show you where the difference is, which layer is the one that sometimes is not included. But if you hear, um, the original style was in, called an unaboot. An unaboot was a little different. It was in, the gauze was impregnated with zinc oxide, um, essentially to kind of help promote healing and some antibacterial properties. Most people don't use unaboots anymore. They'll just use these multi-layer compression wraps. It's a little cleaner and not quite as goopy, so. All right, so the first thing that you're gonna do is depending on where the wounds are, you have to be careful across the top of the foot right here at the front of the ankle where all those extensor tendons are. If the material gets too bunched up there, it's gonna really dig in on that person and be pretty uncomfortable. So sometimes you may add an extra little padding layer. If we had individual wound sites, you may or may not put a contact dressing over the top of it, just to maybe like a nonstick. Um, an adaptix or a telpa type dressing. You don't necessarily need them. A lot of times it'll work just fine without it. So the first layer that's gonna go down, um, and I, these are not sterile, but normally they would come in a sterile packaging. Um, this is just basically padding. If you've ever had a cast, it's really similar to the, what they put down before they put the fiberglass or the plaster part on you. Um, so it is, it's really cottony, it's really soft, it's really fluffy, and it just comes in a roll like this. And this does not need to be um, done with a figure eight pattern. You can just spiral it. Um, you do kind of want to be careful that you don't get too much bunched up over the top. But again, it is your padding layer. Um, and so if I really wanted to pad things, I could put like a piece of foam over the top and that would help protect those tendons a little bit better at the front of the leg. You do want to try and avoid wrinkles as much as you can. And with this layer, I'll usually just do like a half overlap. So I'm overlapping about half the width of it as I work my way up the leg. And perfect. So you want it to end pretty much about there. You don't want to go above the fibular head, um, but you do want to capture pretty much all the lower leg. Um, Johnny's doing a good job of holding his foot at 90 degree angle. Um, you definitely want that. You want them so that when they're in standing, um, if I let his foot just hang and he was in really plantar flex position, then when he gets into weight bearing, it's gonna cause all that material at the front to kind of bunch up and create more grooves, more um, potential to dig in and irritate the skin. So you wanna try and keep them at about a 90 degree angle there. The second layer that I'm putting down, this is called um, cling. It's basically gauze, except it does have just a little bit of stretch to it. Um, another, the cling is like a brand name. Um, conforming bandage is the other name. Um, this is the layer that some multi-layer compression dressing packages will omit. Um, so this is the, what I would call the second layer. Um, and again, this is not adding really compression. It's just really meant to kind of smooth out and um, compact down the padding layer that I've got put down on his leg already. And so it can just be spiraled as well. And again, sometimes this may or may not be in there. That padding layer is designed to absorb a lot of exudate. And so for somebody that does have venous insufficiency, they're gonna be draining a lot. And so it does have a good ability to absorb a lot of stuff. Now I've got my short stretch here. So this is the layer that's really giving the person that compression. Um, and the technique is just our figure of eight. You do wanna come you know, pretty close down to the toes. Um, and again, unlike the amputee, we do have a foot to worry about. So you gotta kinda make sure that you come up over the ankle um, appropriately and still encouraging that figure of eight pattern as we go and trying to minimize wrinkles as much as you can. And you don't have to make it super, super tight. Um, the bandage is gonna do enough compression. And, and the idea with the short stretch is we're trying to give them a lot of um, 
what's called working resistance as opposed to elastic resistance. Um, so that as their muscles are contracting and they're walking around, it's actually gonna assist with the compression kind of from the inside out. Um, I could probably go a little bit higher. I probably might have rewrapped it a little bit, again, to get them a little bit higher. You could use a really long one. So like the one that I just put on Donnie, since he doesn't have edema, is this big in diameter. Somebody that has a ton of edema, their leg's gonna be really fat, so you're probably gonna need to use this bigger size one that has a lot more length to it. It's not really that much wider, but it's just way longer. It's probably twice as long. Um, if I use that one on him, he, I'd have way too much. Um, but ideally, I probably would have done this one a little bit better so it came up just a little bit higher on his leg. Um, but I'm not gonna redo it. <laughs> um, our fourth layer is a layer of Coban. Um, and so Coban is just stands for cohesive dressing. Um, so it's not really, it does have elasticity to it, but the goal, the, the reason we're using this is really just to hold the, the true compressive layer in place so it doesn't unravel and doesn't shift around. Um, and you don't need to have this done in a figure of eight, and you don't really want to stretch it a whole lot. You're just spiraling it up the leg. Um, again, trying to make sure that you're not leaving any spots uncovered as we go. And so the person, when you put this dressing on, they can walk around on it. Um, we encourage activity for venous wounds, typically. Um, they want to minimize how much they lay it, let it hang down, obviously, um, but it's okay to be up and walking on it. Um, the hard part is putting a shoe on, because this will make your foot and leg really fat. Um, with all these layers and padding and everything. Um, a lot of these patients are used to having a lot of edema, so they have figured out what they can put on their foot, and usually it's gonna be like slides or house slippers, things that have a lot of give to them. Um, using up the whole thing. Again, all this stuff would come in a package together when you buy it as a multi-layer kit, um, and so you just have one or two of these each type in there. Um, if you wanted to, you could put an extra piece of tape on the top to kind of secure it a little bit, um, but otherwise that's kind of good to go. Again, like I said, I probably ideally would have gone just a little bit higher up on his leg. Um, he could put a shoe over the top of this, but most of your patients are not going to have normal girth legs. They're going to have really, really big legs if you're using this. Um, but he's at basically roughly a 90 degree angle, so if you want to walk around in it and kind of see how it feels. I did leave a little spot on the heel exposed, so I would need to kind of Make sure I captured that, and there you go. Beautiful.